Previously on Aliens, Ripley and Newt escape the Hive Queen and they are en route back to Earth. What do you think about this movie, Aliens 3? Alien 3, I give it a 7 out of 10. Mm. Uh, it is a weird and dark addition to the Alien franchise. Uh, I think it's a great movie in terms of like art design and character development and different things. But it doesn't always feel like a movie, so I give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, it's a nice exploration of the of an obscure part of the alien universe, this kind of random prison on a planet somewhere with these double Y guys. Um, it's kind of kind of weird. Uh, I did start to feel something for the criminals. Um, there is a question about how much the company knew all along. It's kind of vague. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, I thought it was a great send-off for Sigourney Weaver. Uh, I thought this was a great way to end it. She dies. And that's it. But they do bring her back for number four, so she'll be back. Uh, I thought they're great themes, great sets, good acting. Um, it's a solid addition to the franchise, but I wouldn't put it at the same level as Alien or Aliens. So 7 out of 10. What did you think? I gave it 8 out of 10. I had a good time. Super cool premise. Uh, this colony uh, or this, this factory abandoned by the company and they let them they just let them live there because it's criminals out of society defying guys do your own thing and they form a religious society super cool premise an epic ending the way ripley falls back into the molten lead like like so iconic uh, i'm not thrilled that bishop ends up being an evil scientist but at the same time it's not bad and but but the heat shock the heat shock for the soldier ex xenomorph was weird, and we'll talk about it. it. It doesn't look right. Anything else? No, that's it. Let's talk about this movie, Alien 3. Okay. So we're here on Fiorina, Fury 161. It's a double Y chromosome work correctional facility. So my first thought was, is this, is this real? I, th I think it is, double Y chromosome? Yeah, so we looked this up. Double Y chromosome is an XYY syndrome. Hmm. So people typically have two chromosomes, either mm -hmm. double X or, or XY, but mm -hmm. it's possible to get some triples. The weird thing is this condition occurs in one in a thousand male births. Well, that's so this not, is fairly common. Right. That's, that's pretty common. And many people with the condition are unaware that they have it. Uh, I did look up some other stuff about whether double Y men are more violent or anything. And uh, I couldn't... Inconclusive was my um, takeaway. So... Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like it has much effect on people. If it's this common, and I've never heard about it before. I mean, one in 1,000, you've met over 1,000 men in your lifetime. So mm -hmm. you've probably you've probably encountered one you just never know. Yeah. Yeah. And they may not know. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think the physical traits are they're taller and then they're like mm -hmm. slightly different body shapes. But also, I mean, I wouldn't notice. It says being taller than average, acne, and learning problems. I mean, so I've met tall people with acne who are dumb. Brutal. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> uh, what is it? So Fiorina Fury 161, Outer Veil. Uh, hmm. That's interesting. That could almost mean anything because that could mean Outer Veil relative to Earth. It's like 500 light years away, Outer Veil. Or it could mean the galaxy. It's like the outer edges of the galaxy. I doubt that. Cause... I wonder if it's like behind a nebula or something. Oh, well, that could be. Yeah, because this nebula, like this gla gaseous veil. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe. Right. Cool. 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 Aliens universe. Yeah. Maximum security and the security being you can't leave. <laughs> you can't get off the planet. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Every planet is maximum security. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like Alcatraz, but even so much better. Right. You can't swim through space. So this is the report that mm -hmm. that um, supervisor, superintendent Andrews is writing to the company, mm -hmm. and so we see that Ripley died, and and um, the, the, Rip, one survivor, Lieutenant sorry, Ripley, Ripley, <laughs> Ripley lived. <laughs> That's right, she's in yeah. the movie, and everyone else died. So my thought was, how often does Ripley's ships fail, and is that like a normal failure rate for ships in this universe, or is or is she just super lucky? So. It's kind of hard to tell because it seems like almost all of the problems were caused by the xenomorphs themselves. So maybe the engineering is okay, but because the xenomorphs are following her around, they keep causing the ships to crash. Hmm. Um, so what is that? In in Alien 1, then the Stromo that's taken out, she self-destructs it, but only because the xenomorph was on board. Okay. So okay. And otherwise okay. it's in working order. Then in 2, I Wait. guess... 
before we, so, so she gets out on the shuttle, the escape shuttle, right? And that drifts through the core planets, right? And so I count that as a failure, kind of because, a failure, yeah. because there should be a beacon or something. So as she goes through all the core planets, the more the more planets that the that humans occupy, the more opportunities that that they have to be like, hey, there's a beacon. What's going on? So so mm-hmm. the fact that she drifted past the core planets, I count that as a failure. That was a failure. Something went, something went wrong there. Either it wasn't aimed right. Or the be- beacon didn't have enough juice, which Did why look. would you design it with not enough juice? Yeah, it's kind of right. weird. Right. Um, so I, w- I, w- I, would, I would count that as a failure. But then the Sulaco in Aliens, that survives. Um, and the dropships from the Sulaco, Sulaco, one of them doesn't survive well because of the Xenomorphs. The other one does survive and lands on the Sulaco. So the Sulaco is good. Dropship fails, but that's because of the Xenomorph. And then the question is, the escape pod... From the Sulaco that lands on the prison planet, is that a failure? Because it lands in the water kind of hard, killing people. Right. But did the Xenomorph morph cause that? Did did the company cause that to happen? That's right. Throughout um, this movie, we're not clear where the android bishop from from Aliens mm-hmm. is. We, we're not sure who Sadi's on. Could he have been activated by the company and sabotaged the other ones because the other escape pods? Mm-hmm. Because only Ripley is needed from the company's perspective. Right. Um, I don't know. She's the only one with the queen in her. That's right. So they kill Hicks. Uh, they kill Newt. And is that due to sabotage? Bishop got an upload from the company to sabotage? That's right. Or was it just a xenomorph coming in and tearing shit up? Also possible. Also possible. It's kind of kind of cool that it's unclear because, mm-hmm. oh yeah, this is the state she's in. All beat up, just barely alive. Just barely alive. Mm. I mean, perfect sabotage. Perfect sabotage. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the status of everybody. So, Ellen Ripley, survivor. This is so. It's so dark. Newt is. They spent so much time and energy rescuing her, and then she got captured, and then did to go re-rescue her from the fusion plant, mm-hmm. and then because of kind of nothing you can do about it, dead, it, it it simultaneously makes the story feel so dark, but it also makes it feel real because this is how life works sometimes. Space is dangerous, yeah, and if you're landing on a planet, unless you're Escape pod is perfectly dialed in. You could land in an ocean. Like it, it happens. Yeah. Hicks, whoo, brutal. Hicks is a nasty one. Like he just collided with some structure along the way down and dead. Just yep. impaled. Yeah. Never had a chance. Never had a chance. And then Bishop, negative capability. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is Fiorino 161, the factory. This factory, or now prison, is so big. Look at the mm-hmm. all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh my Huge. gosh. So big. More here's some more shots. So I mean these platforms are enormous. If this is a person, right. these are two people. Right. Look how big this is. This looks like a facility that the company should not have abandoned because then there's right. lots of money invested in here. And then here's I don't know, the molten lead vents or something mm. or heat mm-hmm. coming up. Still active. Still active. And uh, here's the they're in the molten the, all the prisoners are lined up in the molten area. Mm. I mean, this is facility is just incredibly enormous. Mm-hmm. And still function. Right. Nice it's engineering. Super good engineering. So much complexity. Mm-hmm. This is from later in the movie. They even have communications dishes and, oh my gosh. I mean, the company is so powerful and so big that the financial decisions they make, they can just abandon something like this, no problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Not worth it. Dump it, even though there's a huge financial investment. Yeah. There's a company. Who cares? Cool universe where the mm-hmm. companies are more powerful than governments. Uh, so this is... Listen to the dog. Always Dogs, listen to the dog. If a dog is barking at something, pay attention. Some weird. Dogs are incredible. They're like like people will have like a heated argument about some family drama and stuff, and dogs are like I don't give a shit about that. There's somebody outside. Like <laughs> hey, everyone, look at this dog. Somebody outside. Let's look at him. Listen to the dog. Right. right. So here, the dog is cutting through all that. It just there's a, Ripley's here. There's a woman, and then there's the prisoners, and there's all the social stuff going on. Dog's mm-hmm. like uh, something over here. Some weird. Too many legs. I don't yeah, like it. I don't like it. But nobody paid attention. Nobody paid attention. 
Uh, this is a classic scene, rumor control given by Warden Andrews. This is rumor control, here are the facts. A 337 model EEV crash landed here. The survivor is a woman. As we view the presence of any outsider, especially a woman, it's a violation of the harmony, a potential break in the spiritual unity. I have requested a rescue team. Hopefully they will be here inside of a week. So this is actually a big social problem. You've got a bunch of violent men in this prison and they found the Bible and God and they've got this sort of tenuous social cohesion going on. Drop a woman in there. Yeah, that's going to cause problems. Yeah. I mean, they had figured out a way to make life work and part of that was required them to have no women around and then drop. <laughs> right. So, yeah, Warden Andrews is hoping, let's get this woman out of here. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. of course, they have bigger fish to fry. They just don't know it yet. Mm -hmm. So what is this place? And so let, let's listen to the setup of why they're here. This used to be a 5,000 convict facility, but it's been reduced to a custodial staff of 25. So I guess it, before it was a factory of some kind. It looks like something to do with molten lead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it became a prison mm -hmm. at 5,000 people. And now it's only down to 25 people um, because these convicts decided to stay behind in their interesting religious society. Super cool setup. Like, like the, mm -hmm. I can imagine. I can imagine filling in the background for this. So the company is like, we want to mine this other place, so we're going to put our convicts somewhere else. And these convicts are like, no, we want to stay here. And the, co and the company is like, I don't want any problem with this. You guys want to stay here. Fine. Do your thing. Like, you guys are criminals. So we don't want to integrate you back into society. If you guys are going to hang out here and be happy, keep the thing running. We'll give you one shuttle a month. That's fine. Yeah. It's pretty low risk for the company because they, this problem is just handed off to this planet. I can totally imagine an yeah. executive being like, why is this a problem? Sign it. Get it out Sign of here. Let's get it out of here. One yeah. supply ship per month? Sure. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to get those people out of our hair. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can totally see it. It's cool ideas for 15 minutes into the movie and this is already one of the darkest scenes yeah so dark this is keep in mind we spent most of the last movie aliens rescuing newt rescuing newt and then the last bit we see her her accept ripley as her new mother start the clip the noises the crunching everything's in place there's no sign of infection no indication of disease. Chest. Chest. It's so dark. Oh, uh, man. Oh. Oh, we're good. I can't, I can't even. It's so dark. It's their final heart to heart. Oh, no. It's, it's what is it about like body mutilation of a corpse? It's just like you cared about this person, you know? Yeah. It has to be done. It has to be done because you need to know. You need to know if she has a, a um, alien inside her. Right. You got to know. At the same time, it's just it's such a brutal turn of events for Newt. We spend all that time mostly connecting with her, rescuing her. Ripley and her come together. For, you know, they're going to go live a life maybe together. And then no, no, nope, nope, nope. She was actually surviving fine on the colony. That's right. Well, eventually she, would she have lived forever? Everyone dies eventually. I mean, that's true. What is Ripley thinking? What is Ripley doing? She's a facility full of prisoners, full of violent people, rapists and such. And she's hungry. She's hungry. Leave the infirmary. around there, that's for sure. Okay, Ripley knows this prison is filled with violent offenders, and there's no women. She's just like, she's just egging them on right here? What is she doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 Say thanks for what you said at the funeral, Lewis. My friends would have appreciated it. Yeah, well, you don't want to know me, lady. I'm a murderer and <laughs> of women. Mm -hmm. okay. I guess that must make you nervous. Ripley, that guy, um, his name is Dylan. Dylan. He's like, leave, like go away, don't be. And she sits down. Yeah, but 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 she sends that zinger. Like I must make you nervous. Like, 
Ripley is such a badass. Like, <laughs> like on one hand, what the hell are you doing? But on the, on the other hand, yeah. she's like, Whatever. I just killed a bunch of Xenos. Like, That's right. Like, if you guys want to fight me, I can fuck you up. <laughs> like, she's just like, I'm hungry. I'm going to sit down here. Like, this is awesome. You don't know what she does. She's like, I don't know. You don't know what I've seen. You don't scare me. That's right. I, I've, I've taken on Xenomorphs with Marines. Mm-hmm. I've rescued children out of freaking fusion reactors with queens around no problem like if they get in a fight she knows that he doesn't have acid blood like you're fine (laughs) whatever like you don't got you don't got a second set of teeth inside your mouth like you're you're not a threat that's right so really she's right he's right actually Actually, should scare him Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see more about the prison what kind of religion? Some sort of apocalyptic millenarian Christian fundamentalist. When the company wanted to close the facility down, Dylan and the rest of the converts wanted to stay. They were allowed to remain as custodians with two minders and a medical officer. So this does make a lot of sense to me, like we said, that some bureaucrat in Wailing Utani is like, these 25 criminals, they're off our hands if I just sign for a supply ship and two people. Sure. Sure. So I'll sign the paperwork. They're yep. they're on that planet. We don't have to worry about them anymore. And a measly supply ship and two, you know, measly workers. Sure. Sure. Easy. And in fact, if they had brought these people off of the planet, might they they could have joined some other prison camp and then spread their religion around? Like, ah, I don't want any of that. Like, right. just leave them there. Just just leave them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eventually, they will die. Wayland Yutani will live on. We're fine. In perpetuity. Yep. Yeah, makes a lot of sense to me. The Xenomorph in Aliens 3 is an interesting one. It's a different shape than what we've seen in, in 1 and 2. Let's check it out. Hey, Brett. What's this? It's a facehugger, uh, bro. Uh, facehugger. Gassy. Oh, really? Ugh. Oof. Ugh. I mean, it's kind of cute because it's a newborn. <laughs> but nasty. So distinctly like a four-legged creature versus in the in the aliens one and two it was much more of a bipedal uh, animal so so i was wondering uh why 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 is this it also comes out much bigger here with the cow because it comes it's out true. like this big for the hu- i don't know this big for the big, human uh, out of a human's chest so somehow it's adapting the xenomorph is adapting to the host in right some way that's kind of cool so I, I think that the xenomorphs might be an absolutely incredible like animal, just beast that's just, just this designed to take over planets. Because like say if you are on a planet where bipedal motion is great, you in, you infect the you face hug a bipedal creature and then you make a bipedal uh, soldier. Whereas if you have a place where, like, say it's like very mountainous, where where goats are really good, then you face hug a goat, you make a xenomorph that uh, make a soldier xenomorph that's kind of goat like, and so so through this kind of DNA phenotype mixing matching, the xenomorphs that the, the aliens are able to make like perfect soldiers in just kind of whatever environment you want. Right, it could even go to like, you know, on a gas planet that has methane and no oxygen, and there's methane breathing uh, creatures. Face hug that creature, now I can breathe methane. So it could be like really adaptable from place to place. Mm -hmm. What a threat. Incredible threat. Yeah. So we have rules of exploration. One of the rules of exploration is never touch things with your hands. Let's see what the doctor does. Well, not much to say, is there? Death was instantaneous. So many times. Stay away from the fans. Nobody bloody listens. So, so I'm cool with the, the prisoners touching stuff because they don't really know any better. They're not scientists. And they just, they're just they there day in, day out. They touch nasty bugs and they're not even expecting a xenomorph to be around. But the doctor, what's he doing touching stuff? The doctor needs to think clean hands, clean hands, clean hands. Because if somebody gets injured, they need to like help him right away. Like mm-hmm. clean hands, clean hands. Don't touch things. What are you doing? And, and Ripley has been at least implying that there's some kind of infectious agent or something running around. Mm -hmm. He's not sure. So he shouldn't be touching odd looking things right? with his bare hands. Kick it with your boot. Poke it with a stick. Kick it with the dead guy's boot. Just don't touch it with your hand. Yeah. Okay. Get the dead guy's boot. 
I mean, actually, valuable resources. Uh, Other su- resources. Maybe the supply ships. You, you can get some. But, but if it was acid, I'd rather melt the boot than my hand. That's right. Because even though it may be kind of neutralized at this point, it doesn't. It's not fully neutralized, and our skin could be very mm-hmm. sensitive to that sure acid. Can. So, but he doesn't know what it is. So what's he doing? It melted the metal. What are you doing, Doc? He should know better. Maybe that's why he's a class three C. Yeah. License revoked. <laughs> How much does the company know? Let's listen. Does the company know? The company knows everything that happened on the ship. It all goes into the computer and gets sent back to network. So this kind of makes it seem like the company is running some kind of loose experiment with Ripley far away from Earth. It's not like a controlled experiment, but they're like letting the Xenomorph and Ripley and and, and other people interact in a loose manner on somewhere. So you're saying that the mission was never just to bring back the xenomorphs. Like, like sure, that's great. Mm-hmm. But actually, Wayland Yutani is just letting Ripley do stuff and seeing what falls out of it. Right. Maybe. Interesting. Because, I don't know, that's kind of what it seems like. So, you know, we've gotten information about the xenomorph with soldiers and how it interacts with colonists and how it interacts with miners and how it interacts with prisoners. And it got potentially a lot of information. That's right. And it's a so a pseudo safe way to do the experiment because mm-hmm. if you bring a xenomorph to back to Earth, that could be quite dangerous. Mm-hmm. But if you just let an experiment roll and on its own mm-hmm. while it's out in space, it's contained to the ships that they're in. Mm-hmm. And if there is any political pressure not to do human research, or you don't want sort of oversight, so you just kind of push it out to the wherever it you know way it just out happened there. Happened out there. We don't know. It, it happened. Mm. But actually, they're monitoring it and making things happen in the way they want. That's right. It's kind of crazy. I don't know Clever. where the company conspiracy begins or where chance and luck begins. Like, I'm not sure. No idea. So Bishop has a moment, and it's a fascinating sci-fi. Let's listen. Interesting. So like this Android has this concept of, of being of being top of the line versus kind of this falling apart guy and he'd rather just not exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more this movie is dark. Yeah. I mean, you've got androids here, sentient androids dealing with these existential crises. And he prefers say, you know what? I don't want to live anymore. God like, damn. Uh, it's interesting because that suggests a lot of sentience. Because like a straight up robot would be like, fix me, whatever. Right, no problem. Just optimize me as best you can. All right. But he's like, no, I know I'm not going to be top of the line. I know the company won't be sending me on the best missions. I just don't want, I just rather not. Just rather not. Goddamn. Dark as heck. Dark as hell, yeah. So this is a talk with Warden Andrews. This is Ripley explaining the situation. Reminded me of the inquest in Aliens uh, and the skepticism. Let me see if I have this correct, Lieutenant. It's an eight-foot creature of some kind with acid for blood, and it arrived on your spaceship. It kills on sight and is generally unpleasant. Quite a story, Mr. Aaron. Right, sir. It's a beauty. I think he's right. I think Warden Andrews is right to be skeptical. But he should also believe her in some regard and take precautions, right? Right. So so I, w- I would say he's being more than skeptical. He's being doubtful. And so that this, the difference is like, I'm pretty sure you're wrong. That's different than like, mm, I'm not sure you're right, but I'll roll with it for now. But I'm also mm-hmm. looking for evidence in the either the pro or the con. Right. So so while she is saying something crazy, some outlandish, I mean, they're aliens and it's mm-hmm. super lethal, but she also hasn't said anything incorrect yet. So believe her a bit. Especially because the consequences are so big mm-hmm. that you could take a few, you can adjust the lifestyle of the prisoners for a week. Right. For now, right. instead of like, because you know, people go off and do duty off by themselves, <laughs> duty, <laughs> or in groups of two or three, so yeah, they're sure. actually quite vulnerable. If you bring them in to a solid location, they won't be so vulnerable. If he believed her, mm. you know, but he he can't get past his disbelief. That's right. So I really like this scene. So the warden is like the leader of the of the prison. He has the official position of the warden, and he also has this air of 
ability to lead these violent men and control their emotions and the social aspects of it. When he gets taken by the alien, it really has an impact on, on the men. Get that foolish woman back to the infirmary! You can see the panic, the absolute panic of everyone else. They're like, the warden is gone. He was our leader. We don't right. have a clear second or third in command, and we don't have confidence in anyone else. And so they don't know what to do. They're just, they're just all panicked. Right. Because they know that finding another leader is going to be challenging. Now, I think they're lucky that they have Dylan. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to be a leader, but he definitely has the capability. They're lucky they have him. If they didn't have him, this place would be absolute chaos. Just everyone for themselves, no organization. Right. Would have been a mess. You can see the panic. Mm -hmm. Ooh, mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So now that everyone believes the xenomorph exists, they're trying to plan to trap it. I didn't quite get the plan. Let's listen. Let me get this straight. You want to burn it down and out of the pipes, force it here, slam the door, and trap its ass? That's a lot of, like, if this happens then we do the next one if that happens then we do the next one like there's a lot of contingencies on this and given the structure of this place like there's so many different ways that the the xenomorph the soldier could go that's a risky plan <laughs> right and they're trying to control it with fire like like that's right like funnel it with fire so it has nowhere to go and push it in with fire into the thing and then close. If they're pushing it oh with like gosh. metal, well, metal's a solid. That's much easier to control. Mm -hmm. Fire, fire goes kind of wherever the fuel is, is appropriate. Like that's a very challenging thing to do. Right. And then there's like timing. You got to time the fires. One burns out. He just walks right over. You know, it, it, it sounds super challenging super to pull ch this plan off. But um, I get it though. I get it. Like, Dylan is feeling real cocky right now. That's right. I mean, his ego is bulging. Yep. He's... He doesn't feel like he's going to get shafted. <laughs> he's got he's got some balls on him. He thinks yeah. he can pull this plan He's off. hanging out there, letting it loose. So later on, we check Ripley to see what if the alien is inside her. And so they scan her the EV. It's real fuzzy. It enhancement. Enhance. Ooh. I think you've got one inside of you. So the first thing we see here is that that's super advanced technology. Super advanced. Incredible. So look at so this like this swivel arm is doing a scan of this fidelity. It's 3D. High resolution. High resolution, able to scan in a messy environment. Mm-hmm. Where it's, it's kind of like a CAT scan where they're like mm -hmm. using x-rays to look through someone. Yeah. But a CAT scans like spin around you to get all sorts of angles. Right. Here, this this little arm that just flips out, right. he's able to get enough angles to make 3D objects like on the yeah. fly. And yeah. And, and and like I think modern medical equipment requires a technician, you know, and somebody who knows what they're doing, lining right. people and, and working the buttons. This thing is just like boop, go. And then Lay down a little media, crooked, whatever. Yeah, maybe oh. a little crooked. It, it can make those adjustments on the fly. Amazing technology. Excellent medical tech. Yeah. And the fidelity with which it can grab an image. I mean, we can easily see that this is a Body. xenome. You can see the little TVs. Little teeth. Yeah. And so this is, this is deep inside next to her organs. So, damn. Mm. And nice little quick... Foreign tissue yeah. type. Quickly no, understand. No. Yeah. yeah. The second thing we notice in here is that if this... This um, the EEV, the emergency escape vehicles, has this technology. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they do this for Newt? That's a good question. Why didn't they do use this? For, bring Newt over to the, the this EEV, throw in one of the pods, and then scanner. Instead of cutting our chest open, they could have right. just scanned it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Was it important to do the autopsy? Maybe it's more conclusive if you just cut her open. I guess. I feel like this scanner would be able to find smaller parts of foreign tissue than your human eye. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. It's unclear to me. Also unclear to me is the scene in the infirmary where the alien does not attack Ripley. Getting real close, a little touch. Ugh, gross. 
So super scary, mm-hmm. super scary, intimidating, terrifying, pushed down in the corner by this alien, but then not bitten. So like, how did how did the soldier how did the how did the soldier xenomorph cow how did it know not to attack Ripley? So a couple ideas maybe maybe it could be smell. The the queen being inside Ripley gives off some kind of smell. Oh, it's, it's like it, messing with her hormones, right? So then she makes the smell. Okay, okay, okay. It could be that somehow the xenomorphs have some kind of telepathy. So, so like, like so like the the queen fetus is mm-hmm. telling. Okay, okay, could be. Uh, maybe some unknown way, mm. sending off radio waves from inside Ripley. Mm. You know, something we can't see. Uh, but the other thing is, why would the xenomorph try to intimidate Ripley? Why, why I play games here? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like letting you know I'm scary. Um, I guess it looks intimidating to us because that's what I would do if I wanted to like get in someone's face. But it's a alien species, so that may not be intimidating to it. It may be actually affectionate. Like we we see its its forehead like gently mm-hmm. touch your ear. Um, I guess similarly, similar, like for example, like cats will cats will like headbutt you, and you're like, what what are you doing, dude? Like, <laughs> but actually, that's them asking for pets. Like, so maybe maybe that's okay. Yeah, so you're saying this could be like a greeting. Right. Because it's not, it doesn't run fast at Ripley and like tear her up. Right. It, run, it walks slowly up to her and says, hey. Like, here's some drool, you know, hey. from me to you. She's a little hey. tongue thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. So, so with the pheromone idea, mm-hmm. maybe she, Ripley's giving off this sense and mm-hmm. the alien needs to come in and smell her. It's like, it's like I know, uh-huh. I recognize that the queen is somewhere in this room, but I need to come and check. And then just like snakes, snakes smell with their tongues. Maybe maybe that's yeah. this thing. This could be the scent organ, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Also, there there may be signs that Ripley is psychic. Because there because yeah, right. Because there's the scene where the Xeno cow like bursts out and is mm-hmm. newborn. And and Ripley is far away. They're watching Newt and Hicks get burned, mm-hmm. and she gets like a nosebleed, which is like something about the brain is overpressured, something something like mm-hmm. this. And so yeah, maybe the queen in her stomach is having some symbiotic psych, some symbiotic mm-hmm. um telepathy something in her head. Yeah, um, it could be. I guess no it could idea. also be messing with Ripley's brain chemistry. Yeah. So like it absolutely. forms the knowledge in her brain in Ripley's brain that. I now have a queen in me, like I know. Mm. I think she mentions this um, in this scene. I saw it. It's a queen, an egg layer. You can make thousands more like the one we've got here. I so how does she it. know? How does Ripley know that it's a I mean, queen? She, she saw that it's some type of xenomorph inside right. her, but how does she know it's a queen? Right. Maybe she just knows because the queen, either through telepathy or chemicals or something, like formed the knowledge in her brain. She doesn't know how she knows. She just she just knows. She's got a gut feeling. That's that's, that's, that's right. Uh, so there's this line. Of, well, let's, 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 let's listen. You've been in my life so long. I can't remember anything else. So she's talking to an image of an alien that's not, not actually there in the scene. But she says the alien's been in her her life so long she can't remember anything else. Then I was like, hold on a second. Let's add up how much time she's been interacting with the alien. So. When for Alien One, the the whole event of Alien One, from detection to going down to the moon to coming back up and doing the escape pod, I don't know. That's maybe a day or two. Okay. Then she's in cryo sleep, so not conscious, so not really relevant for her experience. Then she goes on to the space station, and runs the cargo loaders. That's I think they talk about up to six months for that. Six months maximum. Right. Then they go to back to LV four twenty six. They're in cryo sleep the whole time. That doesn't count. The whole aliens takes place over a day or two. It's two more days. And then back in cryo sleep. And now here, and it's been a couple days, maybe. So we're looking at six months maximum. I don't think she was there on the space station running the loaders that long, but up to six months, plus about a week. <laughs> so we're looking at less than six months and change. That's not that long, actually. It's not that long. It's, it's long in time, but most of that time she's... Been frozen and her frozen. brain's asleep doesn't right. that doesn't count so it's like she, the experience has been so terrible that she's just forgotten the rest of her life her daughter her husband all of that gone mm-hmm. and it's just this alien it could be it could be that it's so traumatic right mm. it also could be that she's just a romantic like like she spends like six months with someone she's like you're the only person i've ever known in my life this yeah. is how i feel thanks I you, feel more you complete me yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's super clingy 
The second command, the guy underneath the warden, uh, they make fun of him, they call him 85. Let's watch. You can get these drums organized and... Right, 85. Don't call me that. What's this 85 thing? It's his IQ. So 85 is a sub... sub... midpoint? 100 IQ is supposed to be the average. But this is the future. This is like several hundreds of years in the future. Like maybe 85 for them is like a 160 for us now. Like he might actually be super smart. I, that could be. If they renormalize IQ as if people get smarter over time to 100 every every year. Mm -hmm. An 85 IQ in the future might be like genius. smarter than all of us. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and he's relegated to this duty. Yeah. I mean, I mean if, uh, that seems extremely plausible to me. Also, 85 is below average, but it's not... It's not that far. It's not that far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after the plan to do the flame funneling into the... I don't know, the fallout room failed. They have a new plan, and I still don't get the plan. We trap it here first, then you pull the lever, start the piston, and the piston's gonna push the mother right into the mold, and one of the guys will pour the lead. What if somebody screws it up? We're f Okay, well, that's true. But I, look at this piston thing. So this is the room... The piston comes, I think, from behind the camera and pushes through until it becomes flushed with this narrow opening here, and then the lead is poured in here. I mean, the big flaw in this plan is once the xenomorph gets pushed into here, it's just going to be like, boop. And just climb out. Just climb out. I'm good at climbing. Right. And then I also don't know the application of this piston lead thing. I mean, we've got doors. This looks like a workspace. Is lead going to spill in here if it was not done right? Right. So, so if, if the piston doesn't close up and seal against that opening, if lead comes down, it's splashing all over the floor. Right. <laughs> and it's not like dust, which you just sweep up. It's like molten lead, which is now hardened and you have to like chip off the floor. Right. Like, like what, what is this place designed? Oh, yeah. How is this designed? It's so, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense on the surface. I don't think we have enough information to say how it works, but it just doesn't, it looks so weird. It's weird. Doesn't seem right. And then their plan that they're not taking into account the xenomorph just being like, boop, boop. so we d Dylan takes care of it. I mean, it works. It works. It happens. But, but at, at first, when they described it, like, what? 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 <laughs> yeah, let's listen one more <laughs> you time. You gotta do this. This is the plan. We trap it here first, then you pull the lever, start the piston, and the okay. piston's gonna push the mother right into the mold, and one of the guys will pour the lead. What if somebody screws it up? We're f Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good thing they ace it. This was a sad moment. 85 gets pushed around so many times and he finally stands up. Yeah, this is, yeah. It's so dark, it's so dark because he finally is convinced that Ripley is doing the right thing, destroying the Xenomorph. He sees the company as evil and when he decides to stand up to the company, he does it in such a poor way and that it immediately fails and he's shot and killed. It's so sad. He just had no effect on the outcome. It's a sad way to see 85 die, but I can't help but notice that 95 did not die like this. 95? Yeah, the guy with the 95 IQ. Oh yeah, he did not die like this. Yeah, that's kind of an 85, 85 way move. to die. Yeah. <sighs> Brutal. Super sad. So in the jail, Dylan refuses to kill Ripley and I think he's a coward. Fucking coward! I want to get this thing and I need you to do it. If it won't kill you, then maybe that helps us fight it. Otherwise, fuck you. So Ripley also calls him a coward, and I think that's right because he's unwilling to kill her. And now, on the surface, that seems like a good thing to do. Don't kill, don't kill a woman. But actually, it's like it's it's the least ethical thing he could have done. It's it's absolutely immoral because she carries a queen inside her, and if that queen makes it back to Earth, that's a big problem. We, we see in sci-fi, like, or let's, let's do in, in Aliens 1 and 2, that like, we can't have these xenomorphs. We can't have the soldiers get back to Earth because they're so good killing machines. But actually, kind of so what? Like, if, if one of the soldiers gets back to Earth, it kills 50, 100 people, and then, and then you get your military to come in and start killing. 
if a queen gets to Earth, maybe it goes into a cave, into, into some warm place and sets up camp. Now you could have hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or millions of, of aliens running around the Earth. A queen is super dangerous. A queen is like existential threat to humans. So, so the, the most important thing that any human out in space can do is protect Earth. And in this case, protecting Earth means killing Ripley. So I 100% agree that Dylan here, the right thing to do for all of humanity is to kill Ripley because the existential threat from the Queen. However, he's been living on this in this prison for what, 20 years maybe? Okay. And then within a day, this existential crisis literally drops on top of him. That's right. And he's got to deal with it. It would be hard to let it all sink in and believe everything and understand what's occurring. It would just be a lot. And so right. would I hesitate in that situation? Would I be clear of consciousness and con conscience in that situation? That's a lot to take in in such a short amount of time. I mean, the fact that there's a queen and hive structure at all, she's, he's taking it totally on her word. And the fact that she has queen in her, it's also totally on her word. That's uh, right. That's, that's a good right. point. Yeah. And there's, you know, it's like all of a sudden his world didn't have aliens before. Now it does. And now he's got xenomorph aliens, which and are one is more threat. dangerous than the other. Like yeah. what? And all his friends are being killed, and this whole society they set up that was going to be the place he died, all gone. That's right. And if I see it, I see the logic. It's great, but I also understand why Dylan couldn't do it in the moment. Whew. I see it. This okay, this okay. freaking movie. Oof. It's so. Dark, but then also kind of comical. I mean, comical in the way that the alien, the, the soldier alien eventually dies. Well, fuck you. Force over here! Ray, Ray! For the lead! Molten lead. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, yeah. Uh, first off, Dylan sacrificing himself. Incredible. Super badass. Alone, in the dark. Hot molten lead dropped on him. He was really the only, the only way that the alien was going to get trapped down there was with a human bait. What a sacrifice. It's a survivor. Incredible, incredible. So I see what they're going for. They're going for if you have something hot and then you splash it with something cold, you get a shock. And so then things crack. I don't think this is what it would look like. What about like a thermal expansion stuff like glass maybe? Right. So, so I've broken glass before because I, I have like a hot liquid in it. So it's all hot, thermally equilibrated. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is hot. I don't want to touch it. So then I'll fill my sink with water and put it in there. And then, and then, so I'll have like, a hot glass touching cold water, and then it'll crack, just crack right along that that edge. Uh, where oh here here we go, it's a water bottle. If I have this and it's hot, um, if I hold things hot and then I'll put like cold water to here, it'll like break along this line. Now that happens because you something hot with a temperature gradient, so it's hot and cold right next to each other. If I have the whole thing hot or the whole thing cold, I don't get that break. And so what I would expect to see here is, is when the alien's head is hot, if you put in like half of it with cold water, then you get a crack along that line. Or, or, or here, if you're spraying everywhere, you'd get a small crack all over the place, but not this explosion. Like I, it would have it felt okay if the exoskeleton cracked and then like its organs are no longer being held in. So it like leaks out all over the place and then it's dead anyway. Strange. Strange that it would explode. Well, we did speculate in Aliens that could the Queen survive outside in space? And if the Queen True. can survive outside in space, that would mean the exoskeleton can hold pressure in. That's true. So it's it's an exoskeleton. It's hard. It doesn't expand. And so, yeah, it can hold pressure in. So maybe that if the xenomorph is really, really hot with the molten lead, and then suddenly cold, the exoskeleton holds the pressure back, contracts a little bit, and then catastrophically fails because it built up all this pressure because the hot insides, brain organs of the 
held back by the exoskeleton, fails catastrophically, like some kind of bomb. Uh, so you, okay, okay. So so when the xenomorph is inside the the lead, the mm-hmm. molten lead, it should be super hot. In fact, mm-hmm. it probably should be. If you were to put like water in there, it would it would evaporate. It would right. phase change. Yeah. But because it has an exoskeleton, it's able to have inward pressure, mm-hmm. which which allows its organs to get hot mm-hmm. without phase changing and boiling off. Right. However, once you break the exoskeleton, because for you get these stress fractures from, from mm-hmm. the shocking, now you're, you've released the pressure that the exoskeleton's holding in, yeah. and now that's gone. So now so now you could have expansion and phase change yeah, and then and things wrap. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and maybe, I guess the implication of this is that the xenomorph exoskeleton is not only good against outward pressure, but also inward pressure coming from inside, um, which I don't think is the way bugs work on Earth. I think it's just from the outside in, not the inside out. So xenomorphs could be super, super could like survive in a lot of environments. Although sometimes this happens. It's not <laughs> hot cold. Yeah, sometimes it's popping. That's fine. It's, it's popping. <laughs> and then the final scenes of the movie here, we see the big reveal, the evil scientist. Ripley. Bishop. Bishop. You're a droid. Same model as Bishop. I'm not the Bishop android. I designed it. I'm very human. All all the freaking android designers and all the fa- my favorite sci-fi shows, they're always making androids look like themselves. We've got a surgical base set up on the rescue ship. Come with me. Ripley, think of all we can learn from it. It's the chance of a lifetime. You must let me have it. It's a magnificent specimen. So, wait. <laughs> He's like the AI computer science animatronic android guy. And also exobio. Like, he also does yeah. those alien biology. Like, this this one scientist. Like, what the heck? He does so many things. Yeah, that's what I do. One day is one day is bio. Next day is comp sci. Next day is math. I'll throw some astronomy in there. Hell, I'll even throw some chemistry in there. Easy. I just do it okay. all. That's okay. That's okay. Cool. That's <laughs> no. Mighty go. <laughs> so I, I'm. I'm kind of, that's a lie. That's a lie. I don't. That doesn't happen. No. That that's a lie. So I'm kind of annoyed that at the end of the day, the scientist is like the evil person is a scientist because like, come on, stop portraying us as evil. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's pretty good. I'm like evil scientist, heck yeah. That's right. I mean, he has worked his way up through the company. That's right. So. And who's going to have the knowledge and the abilities and the confidence to be evil? Bishop. Bishop. Heck mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ripley does destroy the sample, which is her and the queen inside of her. True. At the same time, how many... I mean, this can't be the only xenomorphs in the whole universe. Right? they got to be scattered around different places, different civilizations, so, maybe. All we've seen from the xenomorphs are whatever came out of that one engineer ship. That's right. But like, if they are having wars with engineers, there could be other engineer ships that are infected. Right. And it could be, in addition to engineers, whoever the engineers were fighting. That's right. They could also have them. And there could be scattered derelicts all over the place. So maybe they haven't found any, but it seems to reason that this isn't the last we're going to see of the xenomorphs. The threat's still out there. Yeah. And we also never found their home planet. That's right. We never, we never, we don't know any information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um uh, I really did like this. This was Ripley died, but is she dead? I think she's got to be dead. Molten metal. Be dead. Molten, molten, molten metal. Molten metal. Molten, metal. molten lead. You're done. That's right. You're toast. Crispy. Catch us next time for Alien 4, Prometheus, and what's the other one? AVP. AV, oh, AVP 2. Heck yeah. Oh, okay. All right. We got a lot more to do. See you guys then.